today, can you put the, the quiz up for at least an hour? Yeah, we will. We will. Okay. Hey, so I'm just going to go over uh, a couple things. We're in we're in week 14. Um, you know, technically there are only 14 weeks in the semester, and so it's it's listed here as week 15. Um, the the Thanksgiving week was sort of a half week, but either either way, we have we have two weeks left. Two weeks left. And. Um, You've got the example problem, you've got the homework, and you have the quiz, just like every other week. And I'm just going to see what, um, what's new on the discussion board. Well, that's a good one by Jason. Uh, fantastic. Harmonic mean and not the mathematical mean of economy miles per gallon. Let's be set at the maximum feasible level. Huh. Fewer, you must have just cut and pasted that in. That's, otherwise, that's some pretty good math for a uh, discussion board. So it is a standard. Look at that. Four vehicles getting 15, 13, 17. So it's a little bit like um, <clears throat> adding resistors and you could I guess you could think of each car as a little resistor. In parallel. In parallel, exactly. Huh, cool. Nice. Nice work. Okay. Some good research. Research. What else is there? Two replies. I see Jason's. I don't know. Every time. Oh, there's Serenity's. Fifty-four. Okay, that's really our current standard. Okay. Um, our size base. Formula to calculate. fuel economy. Nice, nice. Good answer there, Noel. Uh, corporate average fuel economy. So it's that, basically that, that um, harmonic mean that Jason posted. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, it looks like a copy and paste. You know, that's, that's one thing I want to address. Um, as I noticed in... Um, we're online. We're online. Yeah, we're online. It's fine. Um, I did notice in a couple students' um, papers that there were some... There's some language in there that should have been put in quotes. So if, if you've got a significant amount of language in your paper that you did not write, it needs to be in quotes. Otherwise, it's plagiarism. Yeah. Well, what he what he did do is um, source. I mean, there's this, there's a source. Actually, 
Oh, anyway, it's there. Edmonds is one, and here's the other one. Oh, here's another thing. I, I, I think I promised Serenity I was going to do this for his um, paper. Let me just post this real quick. So I want to show you guys when you're when you're wrapping up your um, I'll just show you specific what I what I mean on the uh, on the you paper. Did go to the, the distillery, huh? Yeah. So that's twice So a few things is you know the, the paper needs a title. And the thing is uh, figures figures all need to have a figure caption. And unfortunately the the text in this figure is too small. Like the, the text in your figure should not be any smaller than the text in your the body. I mean, I, I can barely read it, but the rule of thumb is that that text cannot be any smaller than what's in the uh, the body of your paper. A um, couple of things like, unless this is an actual uh, proper noun, it should not be capitalized. Um, also, if you have a compound adjective, you need the, the hyphen in there. And... Yeah, same thing. There's just a few, few errors on capitalization, and so, for example, I, I believe all of this needs to be in a quote. This is this is all directly um, taken from the website. So, one way to do that, and I think there's more to it, but I'm just going to take this portion right here, and if it's a quote. Should be indented and also italicized, just so it's clear that this is not something that um, uh, was written by the the paper author. It was, it was something that was lifted from the, another source. Oh, and I I do it here as well. So that's how to do it. What else? What else? What else? What else? Oh. Um, the other thing that really needs to happen, and you know, pay attention here because I can see that there are references, uh, HTML references at the bottom of the slide, and there are a couple different ways to do that properly. And let me show you what those are. Because the way they are right now, it's it's not um, it's not proper. So you can go like this. So here's the URL. And I'm just going to do Control C, and I don't. And so the problem is I don't know what that reference is referring to. It's just floating out there in the breeze. I don't, I don't know what, where it, what it's floating to. But if it's coming from, if it's actually referencing, let's just say, this portion, I can do Control-K, and I can put that in as a hyperlink. That's one way to do it. Now it's actually hyperlinked. If I go in and click it, it's there. So I've made a hyperlink in the document, and I know exactly yeah, what that reference is, refers to. Control six works too. I don't want to see that freaking blue line on there. Okay. I hate that. Well, if you don't have the blue line, you don't know it's a hyperlink. Well, you'll see it's a hyperlink. With the line. I, I don't, I, I mean, the blue color. You don't like the blue? No, the blue color in text. I can handle like a number or, or you know, something. But when you're reading the text, you see that blue color. It's just like, uh, I don't Wigs out. Okay, so here's another way to do it. I'm get, I get pixelated. It's like Japanese anime. It's okay. So here's another way to do it. Ready? This is actually the preferable way. So insert. Actually, no, it's under references. Insert a footnote. And there it is. So that's that's another way, too. Now you just have the one little uh, your, your footnote. Does that make you feel better? No, because that's got to be. 
So those are the ways to add a reference. Either put it in as a, a hyperlink, which is sort of becoming a convention, and yeah, you do need it to be offset so you know that's what it is, or you put it in as a footnote, which is the and former convention. And also not got it formatted right in the end notes, but yeah. Okay, and then just, this is kind of a weird color. I don't know, there's no real significance for that color, so that shouldn't be there. That's that's the British spelling of vapor, so use the American spelling. Well, I like, I like time, T-O-N-E. <laughs> and then it's also not clear why these fonts are different, bold and not bold, so that, that needs to be uh, standardized, cleaned up. Misspelling on Celsius. Another thing, the, the cleaner way to do this is just do the backslash, D-E-G-R-E-E. -E. And then once you hit a space, that comes up, and just just clean that up. Yeah, the back the backslash uh, degree makes the symbol. And again, this the just you know if this this is not legible. So if you want to include this, go in and, and redo it in PowerPoint. Yeah. Now, this is just a little bit, you know, it's, it's not clear why we're going now into page nine and how tequila is made. It's not, it's not clear what portion of the assignment this is addressing. So just make sure whatever you're discussing is relevant. Um, this guy appears to be a title for the next slide. So if I go here, home, Paragraph, um, line and page breaks. Keep that with next, and it'll stay with the next slide, with the next line, which is, I, I believe, where you wanted that to be. This, that's too dark. You know, light, lighten that up. You know, again, it's not, it's not really clear how this is relevant to the distillery. If, I mean, if that's a photo from the distillery, Great, but it's not, there's no reference to this, so I'm not even sure where it came from. Same thing, branding cognac. I mean, is this really relevant? What are the. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm, this is, I'm not sure what that is. That, so it just looks you know like kind of a. Is? That is a straight copy and paste error. Well, I know, it looks like a very panicked sort of copy and, and, and paste. Well, the, the copy and the paste is what happens. Copy that out of like a Python program and yeah. put it into a yeah. C program. Yeah. They're not, they don't have the same references for. So, yeah, all the, all the figures need to have captions with them, figure captions, you know, and, and the way to do that. Um, the way to do that is. Pretty good picture. Yeah, so um, insert. Go to references. Oh, thanks. Insert caption. Insert caption. Yeah, thanks. So, you know, caption. And then you can go up to where you want to you put your figure, see that figure, and go to your cross references and then follow up. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, it's a good start, but needs some needs a little more work. All right, so I'll let y'all um, wrap up. Um, wrap up this this little section. Brian again put some really nice notes out there. I'm not gonna spend electric or spend uh, lecture time on that. So go through that. Hybrid vehicles, Luke 14, chapter notes. There's an example problem. We'll take a peek at it. It's a good little problem.
I'll write, I'm going to write that out just so it's clear what you're looking at here. It's rho. It's ratio. Okay, so in this case, what we're looking at is, um, in this case what we're looking at is a, um, the angular velocity. So again, um, the angular velocity of the drive shaft, gasoline engine, and then the um, generator. So you've got the um, drive shaft is hidden back here to the wheels. So here's omega d. Uh, so this is on a CVT gasoline. Okay. And so you've got the um, engine. So I'll just put a little engine here. It, it's going to have a uh, drive shaft, so omega E, and then the the generator, so this is going to run into a generator, omega G. So if we take a look, I haven't really connected these properly, let's look on page three, 378. Yeah, so the, the photo I'm looking at in the book, it's on page 378. Yeah, so this, this is more or less a series system where the engine's running at, at constant velocity. That runs a generator. Um, oh, I see. No, ac actually, the, um, it, can, it can run both ways. So the engine can run directly back to uh, the, the drive train as well. So let me see if I can run this. So the so I'm just gonna see so there's a there's a there's a gearbox here of some type. The engine comes into the gearbox, we come out of the gearbox and that goes to the uh, drive shaft. There's also the engine goes to the um, generator that goes to a set of batteries that goes to a motor and the motor also runs into the, um, the drive shaft and of course this comes off and the wheels spin. So we've got three separate angular velocities to deal with. We've got the, the drive shaft angular velocity We've got the engine angular velocity, and then we've got the generator angular velocity. So one, two, three. And I'm, I'll put this as gears for G. Uh, no, let's see. Let's call that. Um, I'm going to put this in really small. G, E, A. R for gears, and this is G, E, N for generator. Okay, so again, the engine send, uh, runs to a set of gears. The gears um, come through and actually drive the wheels. The engine is also running a generator, which sends electrons to a battery. The battery then runs the motor with electrons and the motor also runs the drive shaft. So the equation for this whole guy is, um, I'll write this up, so omega d equals 1 plus r, which is the ratio, omega e minus Rho Omega G. That's exponential, isn't it? No, there's no exponential in there. So, and then Rho equals NS over 
N R. So there's a um, no, there's no exponential in there. So the um, so the, there's there are gears on the on the sun cog and there are gears on the ring cog, and that's basically what I what I've um, summarized in in this guy. So you've got um, number of gears in the sun, the number of gears in the ring, and so the you know the the, the point of looking at this is that the um, point of looking at this is is the faster the engine runs, obviously the faster the um, wheels spin. In this case though, if the uh, if you're using the regen brakes, that detracts from the speed. So this is like you know a, a regen system. So let's calculate the RPMs on the drive shaft given the data above. So the number of gears on the sun gear to the number of gears on the ring gear is 30 to 72 for 0.41 ratio. And then straight from there, you can see that the, um, uh, the generator is running at 120. That's where that comes from. There's your 0.41 ratio in there. The um, engine is running at 1,800 RPMs. So when you run this whole equation through the um, uh, drive shaft itself is running at 2,500 RPMs. There's nothing. There's nothing in the um, uh, problem about what what happens there in the in the differential, but that could be um, you know geared straight through or, or with some um, where's, other ratio. Where's the sun oh, you know, I just I just put them. I just kind of put them all. Sorry, I was. Not really trying to replicate. There's a nice diagram in the book. Um, let, me, let me pull this up on the screen as best I can. Um, so you can see that the, uh, the engine is over here. And they've actually replicated. They, they've showed the, in the, in the book it's labeled as ring and planet. Yeah, yeah. And there's a and the um, and here's a here's a shot of what the um, what it actually looks like. Well, yeah, let's see here. I mean, because they've, they've kind of left one of them out. The um, the sun gear is sitting there at the middle. The ring gear is on the outside, and there are four planetary gears. So, uh, and I think in the yeah. So the, the let's see the planetary gears. I mean, their actual diameter does not really matter. It's just the ratio. Um, it's just the ratio between the ring gear and the sun gear is really all that matters at the end of the day. Yeah. So it's, it's just, um, the, just the ratio of those two things, just like it's just the ratio of... It's the ratio to pop, pop it up, but what is, yeah. what's happening in that is your, is your sun gear is going one way. That would mean your, your little planet gears are going the other way. Well, let's take and a look. And then your ring gear would bring it back in the same way your sun gear is going. Yeah, let's take a look at it. I call it a worm gear. No, a worm, a worm gear t goes from um, rotational to linear. That's a different. That's a different setup. So here's your sun. Actually, I'm, I'm just going to look for an animation because I'm, I'm sure that a cool animation is going to do it a lot better than I am. Let's look for it. Yeah, let's just take a look. This uh, this guy, and it, really the, the minimum number of planet years you can get away with is, is three. The book shows four. That's just to keep it. Let's just watch that. Let's just watch technology. I mean, that's been around since they added the uh, Yeah, 
this one. So this is just showing the assembly. Some detail on the teeth. Since I looked at this, um, mm -hmm. you, yeah, I wonder if this guy might. Today, automatic transmissions are composed of a torque converter and several multiplayer clutches, multiplayer brakes and band brakes. Furthermore, a revenue planetary gear set is used to provide more forward gear ratios well, the, the than a single planetary a gear set. In RPM. A revenue gear set is a double planetary an, an gear set. Line reduction. It consists of a small sun gear that meshes with three gears that surround it like planets. The shaft of a large sun goes through the hollow shaft of the small sun. The outer planets couple with the large sun, the planets of the small sun, and the ring gear. This is a little more complicated. All planets of the transmission have a single planet carrier. With this kind of automatic transmission, five gear ratios can be achieved by locking and connecting components. In first gear, the small sun is driven by the torque converter, which is driven by the engine. The planet carrier is held still by a multi-plate brake or one-way clutch, so it cannot rotate. The ring gear is connected to the output and drives the wheels of the car. In second gear, the planet carrier is no longer a fixed member of the system. Now it can rotate freely. However, the large sun is held stationary so the large sun cannot rotate. But once again, the small sun is the input of the system and drives the ring gear. In third gear, a gear ratio of 1 is accomplished by locking all relevant parts of the planetary gear set. Now, the whole planetary gear set is rotating. In fourth gear, the planet carrier is the input. The large sun is held stationary and, again, the ring gear drives the wheels of the car. In reverse gear, the large sun serves as the input. As in first gear, the planet carrier is held stationary by a braking unit. The ring gear <coughs> is the output. Now, let's have a quick look how multiplayer clutches can be used to change gears. Both clutch baskets are connected to and driven by the engine. Always. When one of the multiplayer clutches is engaged, the mechanical energy produced by the engine is transmitted to the corresponding gear. Hmm. So that was a little more complex than the one that was shown in the, um, in the book, but, but the point is, is that, you, you know, rather than having to have two gears side by side with one, one shaft, um, if, you, if we just draw it from above, you know, rather than having to have something. When it comes to high performance automobiles, you know, um, like this with this guy going this way and this guy going this way, rather than side by side, the sun, planet, and ring allow you to be in line. That's, that's the whole point. Okay.